Reginald Dwight was born in the heart of the suburbs in northeast London. A child prodigy, he was able to play any tune he had and built a career on it. Started off working in pubs. And so I guess that's maybe where the, the strength came, you know, to, hello, I'm playing the piano, you know, put your beer down, have a listen. By 1967, Elton was playing in a small group called Bluesology when he teamed up with a fresh new songwriter. Can I have a, a, a warm hand, please, for Bernie Torpin? <laughs> He's probably more important than me when it comes to writing the songs because he has to write the words before I write the music. If I was a skelter, <laughs> Then again, no, or a man who makes potions in the traveling show. It was a very, very close relationship, a platonic, a sort of brotherly relationship. They shared a, a room at Elton's mum's flat in Pinner. Um, they had little bunk beds, and um, every night they would go off to sleep like little, sort of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet in this little room. And you can tell everybody it was a very sweet, innocent existence. Bernie wrote your song, which was the real breakthrough Elton John song. He wrote the lyric um, at the kitchen table. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in a word. Your song was a top ten hit for Elton and Bernie, but Elton had bigger ambitions. I think Elton, you had to make a little bit more of an effort if you were going to compete with the Bowies and the Bolands, and so he let the kind of inner queen come out. Here we go! Elton just opened the gates to all that glam. He was bursting the confines of his childhood by wearing very large bunches of bananas and windscreen wipers on his glasses. <laughs> Elton wasn't exactly the kind of guy you'd look at and go, wow, he looks like a star. He's this little sort of chubby guy, and uh, he has no uh, idea where to put his foot or his anything next. So he had to do something with himself. Elton was happy to put on that coat of glam, transforming himself from a singer-songwriter into a king of glam rock. You have to take yourself lightheartedly because there has to be a lighter side and you have to communicate with an audience. Very few groups do nowadays. And they were playing to massive crowds. These were arenas and things. We didn't have the big screens up at that time, so they had to be spotted. And where else would you spot someone but in sequin? It's just like a Dodger suit on its own. Sequined up. Yeah, and then he's got this hat. He actually had an outfit that was that had lights in it, and uh, he was sweating so much it fused. I went to see him. I thought my costumes were wild, and I thought at the end of the day, you can look great, but you got to have a good son. But as soon as he sat at the piano, he would forget what he was wearing, and he would just hammer out the music. By 1972, Elton was writing tracks with the traditional glam theme of space travel. Rocket Man from his number one hit album, Honky Tonk Chateau. Up until now, glam had been a British phenomenon, but Elton brought his rock and roll roots and outrageous stage persona to the States, and the Americans were hooked. To get on stage with 120,000 people, I don't even remember part of it because I was so scared. <laughs> Elton was number one, the highest grossing touring artist in the world at the time, so he had nothing to prove other than he wanted to be, be fantastic. By the mid-70s, he had 11 hit albums on both sides of the Atlantic, including his hit version of Pinball Wizard from the rock opera Tommy. But away from the stadium, Elton was struggling with his fame. He was determined he was going to be normal. He wasn't going to be affected by all the hype and all the conceit and all the vanity. But of course, ultimately, it did overcome him. When you're in your early and mid-twenties, you just live for the moment. And of course, there was a price to be paid. His own sexual identity lay at the root of his unhappiness. 
when he and Bernie Taupin were showing a flat in London, he was actually engaged, uh, a woman who was the heiress to a pickled onion fortune and was much taller than he was and he felt very trapped by this and he thought the only way out was to commit suicide. Bernie always says he only turned the gas oven on to low and he'd taken a, a cushion to rest his head on inside the gas oven so we can take it he expected to be rescued. By 1976 Elton was telling journalists he was bisexual. It would be many years and a failed marriage later before he finally came out as a gay man. By now, the glam rock era was almost over, but for Elton, it had worked its magic and launched what was to become a remarkable international career. That whole glam thing was a big deal because his drive was to be the best songwriter, to be the best singer, to be the best piano player, to sell the most tickets, to make the most money, whatever it took to be the top. Over the next three decades, Elton John went on to become one of the most successful solo artists ever. The showmanship he cultivated at the height of glam rock has remained one of his defining features. Superstar. Great music. Great lyrics. Thank God for Elton John.